Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Luigi Giganti and Linda Armstrong. Today is Friday, September the 4th, 2020. It's 4 p.m. New York time. And wherever you are in the world, thanks for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose for happy. And I just wanted to get us started today by pointing out that uh, we'll be doing uh, psychic uh, readings this week. We'll have a break next week because Rita has some personal obligations she needs to take care of. So we won't be picking them up again until the following week. But it's not like we won't have anything to do next week. It's just that uh, Rita won't be here to do the readings. So kind of be prepared for that. Um, and that's that's it. Those are the promo messages for now. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? How's it going, Linda? You're looking pretty good there. Good. You, were, you were telling us before the show that some good stuff was happening. So you got to be in a good space. Yeah, no, I'm, I, lately I'm always in a good space, you know, I'm like, it's good. That's just, great. You don't buy into that craziness because it doesn't have to be. It's almost like these two dimensions are working right now. So people are in the fifth and they're like having living life to the fullest, no matter what's going on. And other people are just caved in on it. Yeah. And those people, the people who are really caved in on just aren't, haven't, I hate to say it, but they just haven't waken up. They're not awake yet because mm-hmm. if they were, they could move into knowing there are Possibly, so many more possibilities that can come from all of this. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good all the feeling. possibilities that already came from it, all the beautiful things that came from something that's, you know, um, not so beautiful. But you know that always the light comes out of the dark, you know, so you have to see the higher vision of it. And And for those, what I've been told by spirit is for those who have lost you know, loved ones, um, it's because it was their time. This was their, you know, um, this was their out uh, when it came to this. And uh, they just are not either ready to be here for the change or, you know, they're just, you know, kind of. I would say maybe even their soul signed up to be part of this whole change because really when so much light is coming to the planet, it's going to, it's like turning up all of the dark and that's coming out in these, in many different ways, not just the virus, right? There's obviously all this oh, yeah. and all this other stuff going on. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of, um, that hurricane was pretty intense. That yeah. Category four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That was mother earth gone. Oof. Big, big clean there. So, yeah, so the more we just send light and love to like all of that stuff going on, but still hold your own vibration. Cause if those people who are able, and, and everybody is, to hold a higher vibration, keep holding that vibration, that only assists everything else that's going on. Right. You know? If we can right. all just be sending love out every day, no matter, even if we're going through bad stuff, the, the more you attach to that light and that love and send it out, the more you get it back. I mean, it's just the way it works, right? It's true. It's hey. true. Um, yeah. My wife has a friend from a uh, very – early years, I think they were friends back in junior high school and they've been in touch all these years and her friend's husband just passed from uh, pancreatic cancer and was really rather difficult, as you might imagine, toward the end there. Um, so I found myself in the role of providing support to her because it, you know, obviously was somebody she knew and cared about a lot. Um, but what you were just talking about is what made the difference for me being able to help her. Because yeah. I was able to maintain my vibration. I was able to maintain that high vibe. And as a result, I, I was amazed how easily Louise was able to climb out of it. I mean, literally, it, for her, the grieving process was probably done in about five minutes. It was that quick. So, yeah. you know, we do have to deal with life. Stuff happens. People do pass on. But, boy, it makes a huge difference when we can stay in the high vibe place while we're going through all that. Yeah. yeah. And. And grieving comes and goes, and it's okay to be with it because it's it's a it, it's part of life too, right? Yeah. Just don't want to get stuck there, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And also, I think people get stuck to the circumstances that maybe surrounded the incident or whatever was happening. You know, mm-hmm. some people get PTSD from it, depending on what they're witnessing. You know, there's a lot that goes on with it, and I always say when when you have people that are helping um, others to pass over, like the work that, um, what do you call it? You know what I'm talking about? Like, like the bereavement like count. Hospice work. Hospice. Hospice. Yeah. Bereavement. Yeah. I mean, that to me is amazing work. 
Mm-hmm. Amazing, because you're not just there for the person passing, but you're there for the whole family. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's true. And if you are aware of some of the stuff that we like to teach and you know express and all that, there's so so many so many levels and so many ways you can help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. And it can also what? be. It can also be challenging too because uh, the gentleman who passed, his name was Bob. Um, what anybody who knew him would have said, he was a very, very positive person, and that can sometimes be a difficult thing. How can a positive person have died relatively young? I mean, he wasn't really young; he was in his sixties, but you know, relatively young. How could he have died re- relatively young if he was so positive? That 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 can throw people at times. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say, big hats off to those hospice workers because I know when my sister was passing. They come in and they're holding a high vibe for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that's just their nature. They're just that loving and that giving and they don't get caught up in any of it. They're just there for that person. And wow. I mean, you know, I don't know if I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've actually had one of my co-hosts was somebody who does and still does do hospice care, Patty mm-hmm. Framo. Um, and uh, she loved it and she still loves mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. They do. And that's how you know they're called to that because they exactly, really, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's really you are. It, it is a true calling, and the ones who have that calling. I mean, she used to talk about here on the show how it it was actually uplifting for her to do that work, which is yeah, <laughs> would better her than me <laughs> the way I was feeling about it. I knew I, I that was going to be more that I could really handle, but she loves it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And my hats off to her for doing that. Well, we have a, a quite a list of questions, so we should probably get to those too sweet. And the first one comes from Bridge, which I believe is for, short for Bridget. And she says, first off, I want to say how truly amazing you all are on this show. Every person, every guest, just amazing. So thank you. And she says, I was wondering if Rita had anything coming through on what I should do to help myself and others and also on a business end. Thank you for everything. You rock, my friends. Mm. Okay, hang on one sec. Um, What Spirit is saying is that she needs to be in service to others. It's interesting how we were talking about the hospice stuff. Um, So she's, um, she's at a place where her vibration is moving up, up, up. Now she needs to utilize the vibration to help groups of people. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what she does um, for a living, but there's, um, I'm, they're showing me that she's in front of groups of people helping them elevate their, uh, their uh, energy. And it can be done in many forms, not to get stuck like when I say that, people may think, oh, so what am I going to be a yoga teacher? I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. It's not for her to get stuck in the what am I going to do. It's what am I passionate about? How could I bring it to a group of people? Mm-hmm. So um, and part, I just want um, in general for people to understand that part of this um, awakening to the fifth dimension is um, – relearning or remembering who we really are as authentic creators, healers, um, you name it. We're being brought to that place where we need, we are asked to hone our skills. And some people may not know the skill set that they have yet. Like some people may not know that they're very, clairsentient where they can feel something but it's it's not it's not about there's no an exact not an exact formula here this is for us to um, express ourselves in, in any form we feel can help ourselves raise our own vibration and the vibration of others it's not about because you know i could be a bagger and shop right right Mm-hmm. And say, you know what? I think I'm going to go and shop right, be a bagger, and I am going to put a smile on my face and, you know, help everybody to have a good day. That That is what we're talking about. So there's yeah. no one right road. There's just the one that feels good 
inside of you at the moment, between your heart and your gut. Right. You know, that message is out there so much, so many people talking, so many people channeling, bringing this information through. Because when Rita was talking about all that, that's all that was coming to me, and I'm writing that. The gift could be as simple as just bringing joy to someone. And then Rita's like, you could be the bagger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Because really, yeah. and, and just be creative about how anything that you do, even if it's the most boring task, you can do it in a creative way and you can do it in a really high vibration. Yes. I think a lot of people get stuck on, they think they, you know, maybe they need to practice what we practice to do something. And it's just not true. It just isn't. You know, sometimes I'm having a conversation with someone and I'm not, I don't get, it's not the messages that I'm getting. It's that I'm connecting to them just as a person and helping them with something. You know what I mean? So this isn't, that's, I mean, that's the message for her, but it's really the message for a lot of people, you know, for most, for almost everyone at this point that's experiencing change. And there certainly are a lot of people experiencing change, all of us really, to one extent or another, even those who are resisting it. Yes. And I don't want people to think it's easier for us because we do this work. It's not. It's, it's, <laughs> I wish that, it was. <laughs> no, it's that we just, you know, maybe we've just, um, you know, uh, have used the tools longer or someone hasn't figured out what tool to use yet to help them. But it, it's not in the, we get stuck too. Sure. It, I don't want people to think, oh, you know, we're above anything. We're not. I was telling you just before we started the show about something I was stuck on where the app was concerned, something I was trying to fix. I don't know what the solution is. You know, uh, I'm right. basically putting out there, hey, you know, spirit, give me a clue here. I have no idea what to do with this thing. <laughs> right. Exactly. I think exactly. what we can really do is just stay that in the high vibe place because while it's not easy, it's easier. It's a lot easier when you're in the high vibe place. It's too much energy to be in the lower place. Yeah. Exactly. Have you ever noticed how good vibes just invite good vibes? Like you ever go to somewhere and you meet someone and they just have so much good energy. Everybody wants to be around that person, right? Yeah. Because the energy is there. Yes. And that even is healing for whoever is there. At that moment, being able to be uplifted to that energy. It's not like they have a job to do that. It's just the way they are, right? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's how people have to look at it. It's not so much a job. Yes. It's simple. It's just keep it simple. That's it. Don't make yourself crazy yeah. trying to figure out, oh, my God, well, should, I, should I meditate for an hour every day? Should I this? Should I that? No. It's yeah. not necessary. What's necessary is that you do what feels good. Yeah. Be right. okay with that. Not feel guilty about it. So I'm whatever. That shit because I'm Italian. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I don't do something the way I said I, It's like, oh. And then, I'm, and then I look at spirit and I go, all right, I, I know. <laughs> I get it. So for that person, I think, you know, it's as simple as what Rita said before. You just got to find what, what do you love doing and see how yeah. you can do that for the groups, like she said. Yeah. There's definitely groups involved, that I can say. And something that we've talked about in many contexts here on the show is if you're not sure what your passion is, start trying things. I mean, just randomly pick something and try it. And five minutes later, you don't like it. Okay, move on to the next one. And then another five minutes later, you don't like that one, move on to the next one. And you'll find something if you just keep trying things. You'll land it because you're leaving your energy open for it when you try. Simple. Yeah. And you don't have to yes. try it long. It's not like it has to be an ordeal. Someone right. put it to me once, I think it was in a marketing course, and they said, what things are you Googling? What yeah, things right. are you getting lost in finding information about? Okay, well, look there. Yeah, that's good advice. That's very good. That's advice. great. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully that helps bridge. Now, Wanda contacted us via Linda and she says, my husband passed away a few years ago and I am wondering if I will meet someone or be with someone in the future. Yes. Um, she has to open up her heart though. She really has to like not be afraid of loss again. Mm. And, um, Move, move herself into the energy of, because I got, you know, her husband is, is around her and, um, constantly nudging her in that direction because he doesn't want her to be alone, you know, um, and, and 
And although this person will, you know, is not going to be her husband, there will be similarities there that she can connect to. Mm. Um, to keep herself open, you know, it's rarely that um, I get told online, but keep yourself open online and offline, meaning if you're on a dating app, feel it out. But then also allow people to introduce you to others. Is somebody, um, I, I don't know why I have a nurse, um, the energy of a nurse. Is there anybody that you know that's act, asking a question about a nurse or is a nurse? No, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about Wanda, um, so I don't know if she's a nurse. Yeah, I don't okay. have anything in any of the list of questions about somebody being a nurse. Okay. I don't know what it is yet, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully that's helpful to Wanda. And now the next one actually touches on something you were mentioning a moment ago, Rita. It comes from Kim. She says, hi, Rita. I know everyone has some level of psychic ability, but I would like to ask you if you can see what level of psychic ability I have and what my particular player might be and what can I do to enhance or make it stronger? P.S. I love this new LOA Today Friday show topic. Yeah, she has strong clairsentient. She has a, and that means she can feel things. So, um, when, when people want to learn psychic abilities, they go to classes usually, right? But I found that, and that's fine, and that's fabulous, because I, I feel like there are teachers that are very good at helping others with this kind of stuff. I find that when you utilize your gift, that you have already and you keep utilizing that gift, it begins to open up other gifts that you have. It's kind of like a domino effect because that's how I experienced it. My clear cognizant, which is a knowing, my clear sentient, which is a feeling, was so strong. And then when I tried to open myself up to something else, spirit kept saying to me, use your Use the gifts that you have. You're not ready yet. Use the gifts that you have. You're not ready yet. Until I was ready to open to the other ones. Because I was so focused, trying to focus on the other ones. I, it, it, it was almost like it was harder for me to actually receive when I did that. So I hope that helps because it's, 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 that's the one that she is feeling the most. And it's it's the one that she should work with right now. And if she's getting any, because a lot of people are getting these kind of one-off intuitions, like, you know, I had a dream or, you know, somebody, uh, you know, I thought about somebody and they, you know, they got in touch with me or something like that. That's That's where it begins. You may not notice it until someone says it to you now. And then you're going to notice it more and more. But it's clairsentient is what I'm picking up for her, the feeling. Yeah. Okay, very cool. I wasn't sure how you were going to answer that one, so I was interested to hear how you actually came up with that answer. And you didn't take any time. I mean, you had it quick. Oh, well, when it come, when it's coming through, I don't, I don't even hesitate because then I'll forget what – it'll get thrown out somehow. What oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I have to act fast, otherwise sometimes – Okay. Well, the next one comes also from Linda. This is from Alexandria. She says, good morning. I don't know if you can help me or not, but I was led to your blog, Linda's blog, actually, while trying to find an answer online to what I had been experiencing. So I thought I would follow my intuition. For the past three days, I have been getting these extremely powerful surges or waves of intense energy that radiate down my entire body. It's so strong that my knees buckle and I have to sit down. During these surges, I have visions of people who I feel so strongly that I know, but I do not actually know them. When it passes, I can't remember them. I think maybe someone is trying to communicate with me, but I can't get any clear message. It isn't scary, and afterwards I feel such a strong sense of peace. Now, have you ever come across anything like this? And thank you in advance for any advice you might share. So um, this could be one of two things, but let me just listen for a second.
Okay. She is um, a channeler, potentially two, two ways. One that helps people cross who have not been able to cross. Hmm. So they're trying to get her attention. The way they get her attention is to come through her. Now, she may not like that feeling, or she may. Either way, it's her choice to tell spirit, okay, if this is going to be my gift, keep me grounded, keep me centered, keep me focused, so that she can get the information she needs and help whoever it is that's trying to get a hold of her. The second piece of this is they are raising her vibration, almost like kundalini energy. They're mm. raising her vibration so quickly, it's and it's coming, I can see it coming right up the spine and out. Oh, my. Right, like a snake, right up the spine and out, okay? Um, and to be aware that it's not, it's nothing to be afraid of, but it's, it's um, kundalini energy is very strong, and it, it, it kind of needs to be harnessed a bit. So it's very important to be grounded and know that everything is okay. So, As it, go ahead. Uh, I can follow up on that a little bit because at first, what first thought of was the Kundalini energy, but then it came to me more that it felt to me like, and see if you pick up on this at all, that she's just like kind of jumping timelines because you know how all time exists at the same time. It almost yeah. feels like she's like a part of her is going into another time where she, she knows these people. She can even be one of them for all we know. Right. Um, so, but I have in some more from future. her. In the future, in the past. Yeah. To, I, I just kind of felt like, you know, it's almost like, you know, cause we are all switching different d dimensions. <laughs> like almost like she's popping into maybe 5d or something already, or just some other timeline who knows right. where and when in the existence of all time. Um, yeah. And she was get, kind of breaking into that. Yeah, I can see that there are teachers there as well, um, kind of waiting for her to. So it's kind of getting her feet wet. You know, it feels like it, it's getting her feet wet. But um, once she's comfortable being in there that long, you know, she may be in that timeline for quite, for what seems like a long time, but in reality, what happens is here time will stop like, and when she gets back, she'll just pick up where she left off. Mm -hmm. Right. So she could be assisting somebody like a, a, someone who's passed. She could be in a different lifetime looking at something that she needs to bring back and tell someone or a past life that she has to remedy in this life. And Linda, that's a really good point because um, it speaks to the portal. Again, people can be portals. So that's something that might be happening. But I want her to understand that this is nothing to be frightened of. It's just, it's just that she needs to understand that she needs to remain grounded and centered and all is good. Okay, I'm glad you're going there because she did give me a follow-up after I talked to her, so I'll just read it. Yeah. So she says, uh, I need glasses. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to just see me squinting like nothing. Okay. So she says, I appreciate you so much. I will be there. So she might be in the chat right now talking. Well. I don't um, see anything from her, but, but I'll, I'll. Okay. Uh, maybe she comes in at a different name. So if you are there, let us know that it's you. Uh, I'll just say A. I don't know if she wants her whole name. Well, we said her name before, right? Anyway, she says, I appreciate you so much. I'll be there. I don't have anyone in my life I could talk to about these things, so it would be a huge relief just to get it out. Like, even just telling somebody about it is helpful for her, right, which she's already started. She says, honestly, these energy surges are beginning to exhaust me. Uh, the first night? I, don't I know lost you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the, they're beginning to exhaust her. She says, the first night I didn't sleep because it kept happening over and over. Now it's happening once while I'm driving all through the day. I see the same man and woman, and I know I know them well, as well as, say, my own child, but it's not from this life that I know them. There is such a distinct and familiar feeling tone during these visions. It's a pleasant one, but now when I try to nap, uh, when I try to tap into my own feeling tone, 
I keep getting one that that one instead, like she's not feeling herself. She keeps like connecting to the energy that doesn't feel like it's her own. Right. She says, uh, it's making it difficult to meditate because I don't feel like the self I know. <laughs> well, this is interesting, right? Having a lot of trouble focusing on work and daily life in general. She said, I believe like you now that it's some kind of bleed through from another of my lives just because it feels so familiar to me. I would be so grateful if you and your friend Rita um, bring this up. These are delicate matters, and it's mostly uncharted territory, so I'll take any insight and support I can find, and I'm sure, as you know, there just isn't a great deal out there. So no one yeah. around her is having this type of thing going on. <laughs> yeah, well, that's understandable, you know. Um, it's just um, she's already, like, uh, her energy is already, like, really high, her vibration. They're just, you know, they're, they're just bringing – she's choosing to go up, up, up. And um, she has to just slow it down a bit so that it doesn't um, – like, we, we, we don't want these things to be happening in the car, you know. And, and it might be a good idea for her to, you know, get in touch with us just to talk um, outside of this, you know, just to help her. Yeah, that's a good t time to put in the note that if you want to reach out to Rita or any of the co-hosts here on the show, use the LOA Today app and go to the Ask a Question page, and you can just send a question that goes right to them. If it's a question that we're also asking here on the show, I'll add it to the list, but uh, it, it goes right to Rita. So you know, reach out to Rita and uh, get a conversation going. Yeah. yeah. And I think since we do call the shots ultimately, that may she could maybe just have conversation with spirit and say, you know, this whatever it is here that I'm to learn from this, I need that to happen in a way in which it's not so disturbing, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And where it's not affecting her life like driving in a car, that's not good. All right. Well hopefully that's helpful for Alexandria. So mm -hmm. moving right along, we will next take a message from Dawn. Dawn says, work has been really busy and full of challenges for me lately. Will these technical challenges start to be resolved soon? Is there anything more I can do to help the team get to a good place? And also on the work front, my position at the company is in a state of limbo, and I could end up leaving at the end of the year with a severance, or they will figure out how to keep me. Now, since my husband was laid off due to COVID, I had just been holding tight, you know, family benefits and all that. But should I consider other options? Where do I go from here? She considers and, other options, and she puts her resume out there now. Oh. Absolutely, 100%. Oh, well, that's pretty quick. Because I really feel like she's going to be in another place. I don't feel like she's staying here. Hmm. And as far as helping, it's she's done everything she could. There's the others on the other end that need to pull their weight. It makes sense. Like, you know, she, there's nothing else she can do. She's done it. Mm -hmm. So there's the others that have to pull their weight on this and, um, and not to hesitate with the, with the resume, even if she needs to find, even if she needs to fine tune the resume with somebody and, you know, um, get a headhunter out there, she needs to do it and, like yesterday because she will have the ability to get uh, to solidify another place. And um, it, there's something about the, I'm not trying to, uh, there's an urgency to it, but not because anything's wrong, just because spirit needs her to do it. Okay. Yeah. That's good. By the way, she finished up by saying, uh, thanks, I love the show. I'd be hard-pressed to say which day and co-hosts are my favorite because I learned so much from all of you. Thank you for sharing your light and message with the rest of us. So, oh, that was very nice. I'm yeah. sorry, I cut off Walt. No, that's all right, no problem. Um, now, we're trying to follow a policy here where we uh, introduce people who have not had questions answered before, and right. we have somebody in the live stream who I, I'm not sure if we've had uh, a question from her before, but I'm going with the idea that we have not. So I'm going to bring her question in here. This is from Joan. And she says, Rita, a friend of mine passed away last week. She took her own life. Is it too soon for her to come to me? Because she isn't coming. Um, well, I can, I can feel her. This is, this is what's, um, what's happening. Um, she's kind of being coaxed by spirit to, 
um, bring her to a place where they need to work on her energy. And it's kind of like a holding uh, area. So she's not quite ready to come to speak to anybody at the moment. Um, she's dealing with her her own um, guides, the teachers, the masters. She's looking at her life review. She's still in, she's not in the general population yet. She's n not even fully there yet, meaning in spirit. I see her hovering um, and it's because of her own guilt, not because there's anything wrong or that she's, there's no, like, I don't want people to think there's danger or she's sad or anything like that. She is being handled by spirit um, for this. And, um, and it's going to take a bit for her to come. I don't, I don't feel like it'll be. And, and I, you know, in, in, in the spirit world, that'll be 10 seconds. But in this world, it'll be, a, you know, a little bit longer for her to process. And then she will come. Absolutely. Um, so I would, I would express to the lady that's asking to um, hold her close to her heart. So, you know, take her picture out and look at it. Think of the good times you've had with her. Um, that'll... That'll help you to feel her, um, but she's just not ready yet to talk. That's it. She's processing in spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And by the way, the question you previously answered from Dawn, Dawn just uh, announced herself in the live stream. She says, wow, thanks. Perfect timing on getting me into the live stream. So just want yeah. to let you know cool. she's there. She tuned in. Awesome. Yep. Okay, so now we have some more questions. These are from people who have previously asked questions, and uh, so with our new policy, we're, we're doing those second in our list here. First one comes from Amy. She says, I'm enjoying this stage of my life, learning so much, but there's still a block. I can't put my finger on it. I can't seemingly push through it. I've tried lots of different approaches in the last three years. Will I ever be able to push through? If so, is it going to take a lot more time? I'm working but still sometimes get a little frustrated with myself. Thank you. Um, a spirit's funny sometimes. They're like, um, she doesn't have a block. She just thinks she has the block. Oh. She doesn't. She puts way too much pressure on herself. Oh. So she's, she has an expectation, and the expectation is what, we'll call the block, but there's no block. There really isn't. So she can, oh, okay, thank you. Spirit says she's focused way too much on that word. On block? On block. Okay. So I'm still blocked. And what happens? Then you block yourself just by it's saying it's no block. Right? Yeah. It's just because you said it, right? Mm -hmm. She's too focused on that word. She's honestly not blocked. It's that word that's keeping her in that place. The minute she loses that, her, her, her energy opens up, the life opens up, it's all, it's all okay after that. So basically, she just has to let go of the idea of being blocked. That's it. That's it. Get it out of her head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And then, sometimes they come across like, Spirit. Sometimes they come across like not reprimanding, but come on, you're you're being silly now, <laughs> you know. So um, it, it, it's that's all it is. It's simple. All right. Well, hopefully that's helpful to Amy. Um, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just asking if you have anything else. Uh, so, from Amy, uh, Linda. Linda, I thought if I wanted to say yeah, something. I, I guess oh, I'm sorry, I'm, Linda. Uh, no, well, now that you're asking, I mean, thoughts were going through, but I was fine to go with the other question. <laughs> but, um, I felt it. Yeah. Now, let me see if I can go back to that. So, yeah, it's like it's sometimes what you might want to call a block because that word is overused. <laughs> it could just be a, a simple fear of stepping mm -hmm. out in a bigger way. And right. that doesn't mean it's a block. It's just when you can look at it and you make a choice that, all right, so... 
I'm taking Rita's word on this. I'm dropping the block. Mm. Okay. Then, then you're like, and then maybe, and you, and we can do that. We can just choose. We actually are that powerful where we can choose to let it go. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then she might notice what's really behind it. Like, it's not really a block. It's like, ah, oh, okay. Maybe, maybe it's just really just being a little bit lazy for doing what she knows she needs to do next. Mm. And using the block as an excuse. So I, that's all that was coming to me. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, we actually have somebody else who's a newcomer who uh, posted a question in the live stream. This is Linda with a Y, L-Y-N-D-A. And Linda says, um, this is my first time asking for help. My intuitive gift is growing, but I'm still experiencing resistance. And my left shoulder and heart are in a lot of pain. I, I did injure it physically, but something energetic is going on. Question mark, question mark. So she wants to know what's going on in her arm? I think so, and, yeah. And in her heart, yeah. And so, it's somehow associated with this intuitive gift that's growing for her. It's on the left side of her body? Uh, left shoulder, yes. Yeah, so it's the feminine side. Um, so she's in need of taking care of the feminine side of her body. And there's also um, some grief attached to it. So she has to, let me give you an example. I came in with a lot of masculine energy in this life. So I had to balance out my feminine energy in order to do my work fully, right? So I had to do a lot of work in doing that, okay? She's just having to balance that out with her masculine side. The left side is the feminine, the right side is the masculine. And the fact that it's the arm and the heart tells me grief is involved. So to wear, um, they're telling me to wear like an emerald. She should wear like an emerald around her neck or something green. Uh, I don't know another stone, but a green stone. Aventurine. What's that? Aventurine. Green stone. Aventurine. Okay. Um, yeah, to open up that area. Also, um, they're telling me to go. She needs to go to somebody who does. Linda, I don't know if you do this. What? All right, I can't pronounce it. Uh, Tunwa therapy. Tunwa. It's like um, it's a therapy. It's it's um, tunai. Two night therapy. Okay. It's a, it's, it's like a massage, but the person actually knows the points to release what's going on in the body. So you get an emotional release by what they're doing. Kind of like myofacial release. You're getting to the, Linda, if you can look that up, two night therapy. Two night. T-U-N-A-I, I want to say, because I can't, but this is what they're, this is what spirit. Please tell me it's even a thing. <laughs> if she's located anywhere near um, Fort Lee in New York yeah. City, <laughs> there's a guy I know that does reactivation therapy where he t- he literally touches on points of your body and it releases. Uh, yeah, so, that's what he's in need of. So maybe it's not it doesn't have to be that therapy. I'll, I'll look up Tunai. I'll look it it up. has to be something where someone knows the points on the body to touch that will release the energy around it. But whether it's grief or it's anger or it's, you know, for her, it feels like grief to me. So I don't know if myofascial release does that. It may. Um, Because we hold a lot in our muscles and in our fascia. And so myofascial release takes care of both the muscles and the fascia. So it, it, can it release? I'm almost positive it can. Needs to go to somebody she, you know, gets recommended to her. I'll tell you who does it. Um, Pedro. Do you know Pedro? No. Pedro Sapiro. He's a no. um, master, I want to say Kung Fu. It's kind of mm-hmm. like a, yeah. I, uh, if I could find out where she lives, I could maybe give her his information. So he's really good at that. Spirit has sent me to him. Okay. Um, oh, one other question actually, for you. On. I'm, I'm going to follow up on, on one question here. Cause she says my left shoulder and heart are in, are in a lot of pain. 
And I, we were kind of all saying emotional pain, but shouldn't we also point out she needs to rule out any physical causes going on there? Yeah. Um, if it's physical, it's coming from the emotional. That's what it feels like to me. Okay. I mean, I was just thinking that uh, any time that I hear somebody talking about the words pain and heart in the same sentence, they ought to have at least a physician take a look and make sure everything's fine before they try anything else, just to make sure. I, I see what you're saying. Oh, I yeah. understand. I didn't, I didn't know what you meant by that. Yeah. Now, absolutely. You go. Usually the pain is in the right arm, but, mm -hmm. you know, and there's other, there's other things connected to that nausea, you know, for women, some mm -hmm. stomach stuff. Yeah, goes. it is different for women, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, of course, always go to the doctor. Yep. That in a in itself can create less anxiety once you know everything's okay. True. Yeah. Um, yes, Linda. The guy I was I couldn't find anything on that. I was getting like uh, some kind of some kind of listening device. <laughs> no, I gotta <laughs> but, find. Um. If, so if she goes to reactivateme.com, this is my my friend Andy, who I found through word of mouth. And I, and I believe he also does this remotely. Hmm. And it's really amazing because he's working with the meridians and he knows all of the energy systems within the body. And he kind of developed his own thing from having all this problem within his own body and went to all these different modalities. Nobody could help him. So he developed his own thing <laughs> and it works, yeah. it works, works really well. Yeah. That, the other one may be under massage. It may be two nine massage. If, uh, did you look up massage with it? No, I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Go ahead, Walt. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. I, Give I me mean, a little crazy. <laughs> well, you know, you have a little reason for that. You, you're doing all this, this work catching uh, or uh, tying into the psychic uh, spiritual side. I mean, it, that's going to. Oh, I got it. It's two words. It's what? It's two words. It's T-U-I and then N-A. Oh. It's a branch of traditional yeah. Chinese medicine. Often used in conjunction with acupuncture, um, okay. fire cupping, herbalism, tai chi, and other Chinese, and, and moxie bustion. I don't even know what that is. So that's it. Yes. T U I, new word, N A. Yeah. Okay. Two nine, two nine. And two nine. actually, it does say, t oh, I also saw it, oh, I, and I also see it this way, in one word, T U I N A, massage, unless that's just somebody calling it that. But well, it is it is definitely a massage because I've had it done. Um, I I I I think I didn't wasn't sure if that was the name of it because I've been to a lot of different people that do different things. I just wanted to make sure I had the right one for it. But that is the one that releases the emotional body. But if your guy does the same thing, she can try whatever resonates with her. You know. Yeah. So T U I and then N A. Okay. One word or two words. I'm getting it both ways. Gotcha. But the word massage made the difference. But I had, yeah, I thought I had the whole thing like screwed up. I'm like, this is something I remember from the past, and I'm not making shit up. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you are making it up, you're you're very accurate about it. Let's put it that way, because <laughs> yeah. it's it's pretty clear how accurate it is. So, okay. Um, Moving along, this is from Josie. First, she sent a comment. She said, thank you so much for answering my question on last Friday's episode. I trust Rita very much. She's wonderful. And then she sent up a question, and her question was, my grandfather passed away from cancer eight years ago in 2012. Given how protected I have felt amid all the chaos going on in the world, I have been extremely grateful for how healthy my household has been. Lately, I've been imagining myself whispering to him at night. On my birthday night, July 28th, he visited me in my dreams, told me a funny joke, and hugged me. And one day, when shuffling unicorn oracle cards, I received the grandfather card. I've also been seeing his birth date, February 21st, a lot. So if you can connect with his energy, what messages, if any, does he have for me? Okay. He's bringing the message of joy to her. Um, so... Um, and that's why he like he told her a joke and he keeps coming up for her. He wants her to stay in the energy of joy. So whatever he can do to do that. Plus, um, I don't know if she has children, but I'm seeing that he um he's connected to it feels like her children. Hmm. Um and 
or somebody's children in the house if she doesn't have, like somebody's got children that he's connected to that he watches over, hmm. you know? Um, and he visits her more than she even realizes sometimes. But his message is to stay connected to the energy of joy. Good advice. Stay there. Just stay there through this whole thing he's saying. Just continue to be in joy. Even if you're having a shitty day, find something to be joyful about. All right. The message. Okay. Hopefully that helpful is helpful to Josie. Next one is from our own Alex, Alex King. She said, I had a very specific dream last night. One of my, one, one of, one of those dreams that turns out to be right. Who sends me my dreams? And <laughs> I'm not sure how this connects in. Do I have cancer? What? <laughs> That's what she wrote. Alex, you got to work on the questions a little bit. <laughs> Alex that we've been talking to? Yeah. Wow. It's funny. When she said, who sends me my dreams? Yeah. Immediately, Spirit says her own subconscious is sending her the truth. Like, no, like there's not a specific energy sending her the dream. It's her own higher self sending it to her, which I found a little interesting because I've never had that answer before mm. about dreams. I used to do dream interpretation a lot. Mm -hmm. And it, it's very specific and done in a specific way, the way I was taught. So um, I, I don't know where she's getting this cancer from. I don't feel any of that. I, I don't feel any of it. But if, again, we're going to say we're not doctors. We're not, you know. Um, yeah, we don't do medical diagnoses I, here. Right. Um, I just don't feel that energy. Mm. You know, I even when I look in her body, I'm not seeing, you know. Sometimes I can see, like, shades of colors that would say, oh, that's something. But couldn't even tell you if it was... I just don't see it, and I'm not feeling it. She's, by the way, in the live stream, and she she followed up by saying the dream was about cancer, so that's where that came in. Oh, well, here's my answer to that, because she needs to understand that a lot of dreams are metaphorical. Hmm. So now I know why I don't see it, because Spirit says you got to cut the cancer out of your life that's making you crazy. Ah, so cancer is a metaphor for something going on in our life. A person could be a situation, could be something that is, I don't feel physical. I feel like that's a metaphor. Okay. And out that way in the dream is just trying to tell her something. Yeah. That's She's got a lot of... She's got a lot of um, thought processes with illness around her right now. So there's a lot of fear around that. But I, what I just heard was look around you and see where you have to cut the cancer out. Hope that okay. helped. Yeah. She's I think you, you redirected very well on that. That makes a lot of sense because, like, like the way you reacted when I first read, I said, huh, what are you talking about, Alex? <laughs> but yeah. then she filled in with the cancer was in the dream and yeah, I think you nailed it. Yeah. I don't feel like it's anything like that. Yeah. Okay, good. And then we've also got, uh, we've had a few questions from Nasha and I'm, I'm not going to try to do everything that she's typing in here, but I'll, I'll grab one of them. Nasha in general, we want to have somebody, when you have a lot of questions, we want you to pick out the one that is your most important one. Um, and that's true for everybody. If you've been, especially if you have been on the show before in terms of having a question answered, if you're sending in more than one question, we want you to select the ones that the one that is the priority question. So we know which one to focus on because we're trying to get everybody's questions in here. And it's important to, uh, you know, kind of share, share Rita around. There, there's only one Rita here. I mean, we got to be careful about sharing her. <laughs> so. Oh, we got Linda too. And she's, She's right on the money when she gets her stuff. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go back to what she was typing earlier. 
And by the way, she says she's been doing her mirror exercises. So good for her. That's really, really good. I told her to keep doing them. I, I said that in the uh, live stream. And then, wow, she, she asked a couple things that are a little confusing. Well, give me something that you understand. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I guess these are about past things that, that hurt for her. She says, well, here's one that I know that we can both understand. She says, what is my life about? In that, uh, as my mom says, I'm here to worship God. That, that's what her mom tells her. But what is her life really here for? Is, is that what her, what she's here for? Um, no, I, I mean, that's just, um, flat out. No, um, she is God. She's just that essence, you know, that we all are. So, um, and I'm not saying you worship yourself. I'm not talking like a narcissist. Or mm-hmm. She has to, she has to, um, learn to, she has to learn what feels right for her to follow. Just like I had to learn that Catholicism was not, all of Catholicism was not my cup of tea, right? And everything was about praying in my house and everything was about God and Jesus and Mary and all of that. And I had to find my way to and know. She actually what- commented here. She says, I'm being pushed to live more or less like a nun. So right along the theme of what you're talking about. Yeah, it's, it, there's just no truth in that. It's, and it, it's only, her mother isn't a bad person. She's just fearful. Mm-hmm. And it's how she's been raised. So I could tell her one reason why she's here. She's the, um, it's so good to be the black sheep in the family. Let's go. <laughs> because they end up being the white sheep in the end mm-hmm. when, follow their own truth and they're able to um, connect to their own higher self and figure out what feels good for them. So I urge her to, you know, I, I was uh, connecting to Jesus, Mary and the angels, right. And the Holy spirit. That's all I, that was it for me. The rest of that bullshit of not eating meat on Friday and not doing <laughs> this Wednesday. And you know, you know, all of that went right out the window. Right. So whatever feels right to her, it, and it could be just God that feels right, you know, or source or just love, whatever it is, that's what she has to follow. And she, her mother needs to respect that. And if she can't, they're just going to have to agree to disagree. Mm. So it's not like I, I said to the Catholics, you're assholes. I'm not doing this anymore. I can't stand it. You know, I wasn't, I understood that people needed church. I understood that people needed to experience that. I just didn't need to. Right. I didn't need to confess to a man because I got, I had the direct connection. I learned that. I had a direct connection there. It was me that I had to forgive myself. And then God says, of course, you're forgiven. <laughs> it's harder to forgive you than for God to forgive because it's all forgiving. No matter what you do, mm-hmm. you are. And if you don't believe that, read my book and you'll know. <laughs> By the way, that's what the mirror exercises that she is doing are for, for helping you to appreciate yourself, to forgive yourself, to let go of stuff and say, I am doing great. I, I love myself. I, that's what the whole purpose is, to just build up that understanding about your own connection. Mother is going to feel the change and challenge her. That's what happens when people get afraid of someone they love moving in a different direction. That's what my family did to me. Mm-hmm. God, she's going to hell. She's gay. <laughs> she the Catholic church anymore. I mean, it was forget it. Mm-hmm. So I can tell you that that's just not true. Just not true. So I'll just, I'll just add that she needs to just continue to find what lights her up and what is her own truth Yes, and stick Stick true to your own truth. And I can share too, because, you know, I mean, my mom asked me one time if I believed in God, and I was finding very clever ways to try not to say no. At the time, I didn't, you know. And so I said, um, I found, I wind up saying, I would love to feel that God is there. I just don't have my own 
proof my own experience, right? I found a really good way to tell her. Right. My sister calls me up a week later. You know, mommy's taking Valium every day on the couch because you don't believe in God, right? <laughs> my mom was destroyed. <laughs> was, no matter how I tried to sugarcoat it and not that come out and say I don't believe in it. Yeah. Um, but guess what? I'm doing all this work on myself, right? And right. a couple of years later, I'm at a party. And I might have told this before on this show. I don't know, Walt. But my cousins are there, and they want to find out about the stuff that I do. And, like, we're all in this conversation. My mom wants to find – like, my mom has changed because I changed. She's, we're in this conversation. My sister's there, too. And she says, you know, I just don't know if God really exists. I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. My sister looked at me, and we looked at each other like, what did you just say? She said, I would love to know. I would love to believe that he's really there, but I don't know for sure. I'm like, oh, my God, do you remember taking Valium for a week because I said the same thing? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, she didn't even remember it. It's yeah. like she jumped tracks. She shifted into a different vibration, but not because I was doing work with her or anything, because I changed who I am. I found my yes. truth. I have a direct connection to this energy that is God that may have many different names. I even did a video, I am God, you are God. Show that to your mom, she'll go <laughs> off the deep end. But, <laughs> Yeah. But, but no. my point is this. You gotta stay true to what you what's right for you and as you hold that, you will be surprised how more accepting she'll be of it. Or or how it might let her to find her own truth and not just what she's been indoctrinated with, you know? Believe me, if my mother could do the laying on of the hands with me, anybody could change. Mm. And, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? And she actually went down and felt the Holy Spirit come through her. It was, like, amazing. Wow. And that's because you were able to hold that light and that energy, right? So then you know, we could only influence, right? We can't that's change it. anyone. Yeah. That's right. She's going to do it. Mm -hmm. What's up? And by the way, she confirmed the black sheep thing. Um, yeah. So she went through the same thing like you did. Um, but I want to remind her what you said. Turn into a white sheep. I mean, the only reason that's a black sheep is you're thinking of it as a black sheep. Turn into a white sheep. That's right. Be the white sheep. <laughs> be, the, be the rainbow sheep. The totally unique sheep. The rainbow sheep. sheep. Yeah. Oh, one. yeah. Love it. I love it. Cover the whole spectrum. I like that. That's really good. Oh, by the way, we also had a follow-up from Linda with a Y. I remember a few minutes ago she said, thank you so much. Um, releasing the PTS past, I'm sure, makes so much sense. I didn't realize it was grief. I did have one myofascial massage last week. It helped, but the pain came back. And I live in Ontario, by the way, Ontario, Canada. Okay. Well, she can't go to anybody we know, but no. find somebody that does that kind of work. And if she right. did the massage, then, you know, um, make sure that they understand that some of this is emotional. And it, and it seems like that modality that you mentioned, which I can't even say the name again for is it could be everywhere because it seems yes, like, I, it, yeah, I agree. Definitely. That's good. That's going to make it easier for her to find too, which is good. Yep. Especially if you, if she believes she's going to find it, that's half the battle I'm finding with this stuff. You have to believe that something is there and then all of a sudden it starts showing up until you believe it. It's going to, it's almost like it's hiding itself just because right. you don't believe it. <laughs> that's it. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, we have just a couple minutes left. Uh, Chuck had given us a topic for a discussion, and maybe we'll save that for next week while you're away. But I'm going to remind people, Rita's not going to be joining us next week. She'll be joining us the following week. Continue to send your questions in. Use the LOA Today app to do that. I'll save them all up. And so when Rita's back, we'll be able to go through these again. Um, also, make sure that any other questions that you have for any other co-host, maybe Linda, maybe you have questions for Linda, or any of the people who do the other shows with me Monday through Thursday. All of them are listed in the LOA Today app. That's why we put it in that way. So you can qu you can send a question to anybody. And people have been doing that, but I want to encourage more and more people to do that. Um, yeah. We've got you know the stream of David on Tuesday, um, Louie and Amy on Monday. We've got Cindy on Wednesday. Cindy's an amazing relationship coach. You've got a relationship question? Ask Cindy. You know, Take advantage of that app and just keep sending in those questions. And be sure, of course, to tell a friend about the app so that they can hear about it too. And with that thought in mind, wait, once again, on. Rita, well, oh, wait, what, 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 we got one more. Wait, well, wait, what there's was, more. <laughs> what was Chuck's topic? Chuck's topic, uh, Chuck's topic was the subconscious mind. Oh. Uh, we, 
We could spend fucking days on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll come up with a whole thing for that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, I mean, that's that's what drives us. So, ninety five percent of the time, if mm-hmm. you know, figure yep. out what's going on, you know. But yeah, we'll we'll get to that for sure. I like that, you know. I I hope that people start throwing topics at us because. I, you know, it's so helpful to understand what people really want to know mm-hmm. so that you can help them with that. And he gave me some good detail to start the topic off. So maybe, you know, maybe Linda and I can start next week. And uh, when you get back the following week, you know, we can tell you what we were we were addressing. Maybe you'll have something to add to it. And we'll just make it part of the ongoing conversation. That's it. All right. All right. Thank good you. Stuff. So thank you very much, Rita and Linda, as usual. Wonderful thank job. Thank you, live streamers. Thank you, everybody sending in your questions. We appreciate you so much. And thank you especially to our podcast listeners as well. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.